get going. So uh, as you probably know, you, it's all over the news. Uh, uh, Hassan Nasrallah has been uh, killed. He was killed yesterday in an attack by Israel on the um, on the headquarters of Hezbollah uh, in a deep, deep basement uh, underneath uh, a, a number of high-rise buildings in uh, a neighborhood in the south of uh, Beirut. Uh, it's uh, Israel, you know, I've seen various estimates, but they used, let's put it this way, a lot of bombs. <laughs> this was not like three or four. There were a lot of bombs that were dropped on this site yesterday to make sure that the job was completed. That is, they wanted to make sure that everybody in that bunker was dead. And um, they did a thorough job of it. If you've seen pictures of it, uh, they they completely destroyed uh, that facility. They've been uh, they've known of this place for a long time. They've been monitoring um, and as well as uh, movements for months. Uh, they've been waiting, uh, not so much for the opportunity, but they I think they've been waiting for a decision. Uh, the um, the government had before it uh, a, a decision to kill him on several occasions over the last few months, and they turned it down. Finally. Uh, this week, they decided yes, and, and they took him out. Uh, Nasrallah has been the head of the Hezbollah for over 30 years. The reason this is so significant is because he has had massive influence throughout the Middle East. This is a man who had I incredible charisma. Don't ask me what, what you know, how, how to measure charisma. Uh, the fact that people followed him and listened to him and and uh, and and basically, uh, he was a celebrity uh, within the uh, the Shiite Muslim community, the Iranian-backed uh, Shiite Muslim community. This he he was the guy. Uh, he gave inspiring speeches. Uh, he riled up the audience. He uh, he was considered uh, to be a strategic genius. He got a lot of credit for the 19, the 2000 withdrawal of Israel from Lebanon. He was considered the guy who saved Lebanon, saved it, uh, uh, you know, saved it from the Israeli menace. Uh, he, of course, uh, since October 7th, has been siding with Hamas, and he gets a lot of credit for that. Um, he goes in the, he, he used to go in these speeches and attack Israel uh, vehemently, and he and he survived. He survived for 30 years. Uh, he came to lead Hezbollah after the previous head of Hezbollah was killed by the Israelis uh, 30 years ago. So uh, he is a major figure in the world terrorist network. And, uh, you know, I'll get into this in a future show in much more depth, but uh, Hezbollah is responsible for killing uh, 241 Marines in their barracks in Beirut, bombing the U.S. Embassy, killing the CIA head of, of the U.S. Embassy, torturing him and then dropping his body, uh, you know, in the middle of nowhere. Uh, they also kidnapped, killed Americans throughout the 1980s. They are uh, responsible for the bombing of the Koba Towers. I can't remember the number of casualties there, American casualties there in uh, Saudi Arabia. They are also responsible for the bombing of the um, of a Jewish community center uh, in uh, Buenos Aires in Argentina, uh, which killed uh, scores of people. Uh, and that that is just the terrorist attacks outside of Israel. They're responsible for uh, hundreds of missiles, thousands of missiles into Israel, a variety of different attacks across the border and killing of Israelis. They have sustained a state of war with Israel for the last 30 plus years, really since uh, in 1983 when they were founded. And they really were founded by a, an attack on an Israeli military base within Lebanon and then a few days later, attacking the American barracks, uh, the Marine barracks, and the American embassy. Uh, the, uh, Hezbollah is recognized, not that it matters who recognizes them, but recognized as a terrorist organization by almost every, uh, uh, by, by most countries around the world. And it is interesting to see that there's almost no condolences being sent from any, any country, any political leader out there. Everybody knew, knows what a monster he is. Uh, and uh, this is a major blow to terrorism and terrorists around the world. It's also 
And again, I'll get into more of this in a future show. Actually, the future show is going to be tomorrow. So tomorrow I'm going to dedicate a show to a lot of this. We're two o'clock tomorrow, um, we'll, we'll do a show on the Middle East. And if this is a new, if this is a turning point in the Middle East. Uh, but, you know, this is, uh, well, Israel has occasionally brought down a leader of a terrorist organization and has done so over the years. And, um, you know, of course, took out Hania in, in Iran, the, the Hamas leader. Over the last two weeks, Israel basically has dismantled the entire leadership structure of Hezbollah in an unprecedented, never seen before uh, uh, set of actions and displayed to the world and certainly to the Muslim world, but to the world more broadly, uh, how much more powerful uh, the Israeli military is. And also it is in a sense, not that you can ever redeem yourself, but it, it's it's a a sense of redemption from October 7th, the massive, uh, uh, unequivocal, uh, uh, you know, failure of Israeli intelligence. God, the, the, the Israeli intelligence that's gone into the beepers, the, the walkie-talkies, the killing of every single person in the leadership position, knowing where they were to the minute, what car they were driving, what motorcycle they were on. It's just been stunning to watch. They, you know, they must have who knows how many spies within the Hezbollah organization, many, but they're also obviously, uh, you know, hooked into every communication that they're doing and, and uh, every, every aspect of their operation. They know Hezbollah inside out uh, and they've, they've been a step or multiple steps ahead of Hezbollah. It turns out for years, given the beeper attack and uh, it's just a stunning, just the whole last two weeks have been stunning. Uh, the willingness of Israel to bomb the bunker of Nasrallah, in spite of the fact that they knew civilians would die, in spite of the fact that there were uh, 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 apartment buildings right above it, uh, is, uh, is uh, you know, maybe finally a strategic shift in the way Israel is fighting and maybe uh, some kind of indication to the world of what the West could do, what the West could do if it put its mind, it put its mind to it. So... Uh, I think it's really, really significant, maybe not in and of itself, but, you know, if you add to it uh, everything else that Israel has done over the last two weeks, and if you add to it uh, who Nasrallah was and his importance within the kind of Islamist, um, uh, Islamo-fascist, however you want to call it, movement, uh, his significant is, significance is huge, and uh, taking him out is huge, and it sends a clear message uh, I, I, you know, rumors are that uh, the the uh, supreme leader of Iran has now gone into hiding. Uh, I assume with no beepers, no walkie-talkies, no phones anywhere close to him, somewhere deep in a bunker, maybe close to the nuclear facilities. Who knows? But yeah, this is putting the fear of Allah into these people. And it's exactly the right strategy. Uh, more is needed. Again, more on that tomorrow. Anyway, tomorrow at 2 p.m., We'll talk about um, Israel's strategy vis-a-vis -vis Lebanon and Hezbollah, uh, and we will also talk about uh, more broadly uh, the um, uh, the the Middle East and uh, what the what 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 we could do uh, or what is likely to happen in the Middle East in the uh, foreseeable uh, future, given uh, everything that's going on. We'll talk about Gaza. Uh, we'll talk about Lebanon, uh, but we'll also talk about places like uh, Saudi Arabia, UAE, uh, and the rest of the Middle East. But it is, uh, so uh, tomorrow, 2 p.m. East Coast time, right here, uh, same place as always. Uh, that'll be a full show, taking this into account. I'll, I'll tell you more about Nasrallah, his life story. We'll talk about who is likely to replace Nasrallah. I initial reports out of the attack yesterday had his number two, killed as well, but it looks like he actually survived or wasn't with him. Uh, and um, uh, of course, Hezbollah is a very, very large organization. Uh, it, it, this is not the end of it, unfortunately. Uh, it is likely that a new leadership will arise. And indeed, the strategy, at the end of the day, the strategy cannot be just decapitation. Israel's done that for years, and that has not solved the problem. It has to be more thorough, but Israel's giving indications at least some indications that this is the they're on that path
we'll see. But if you want to, if you want to party to celebrate and as well as death, that will be, uh, we will, we will do that tomorrow and uh, go into a lot more depth and, uh, a lot more. I did put Nasrallah is dead at the top of the title for today's show uh, as clickbait. I, I I'm entitled to clickbait once in a while. I don't do a lot of clickbait, but once in a while we need it. We need to do that. Um, Adam says Israel just killed the guy who was supposed to replace Nasrallah. Um, that is great if that is uh, indeed the case. I don't doubt doubt Adam, but fog of war and all of that. I have my my sources. I I can check. Uh, to see what they are saying, um, uh, sources I haven't seen in a little bit, but um, I, I, yeah, it wouldn't be surprised. Um, yep. Okay. Uh, I don't, yeah, I don't see on my end verification that that is the guy they killed. Doesn't mean it's not case right um but that would be great if they've got the number two guy if they've got uh his uh his replacement already dead um you know we should also note and again i'll talk about this more tomorrow uh just how many people in the middle east are happy right now that is uh, we have mass massive celebrations in syria uh all the uh syrian opposition groups that have been brutally brutally treated by Hezbollah and attacked. Hezbollah was used as the Iranian agent vis-a-vis -vis, uh, vis -vis, uh, the uh, uh, Syria. Uh, they slaughtered, killed, raped, tortured, starved to death tens of thousands of Syrians. And in uh, bastions of uh, uh, Hassan Khalil Yassin, um, Hassan Khalil Yassin is not the guy that I expect to be uh, to replace uh, Nasrallah, uh, Adam. I, I forget his name. Um, anyway, I, I, that is not the name I expect. There's somebody else who will probably be number two. Um, all right. So, yeah, a, a lot of people celebrating. I think the, the people of Iran are celebrating right now. The people of Iran. Because they view they viewed Nasrallah as a a linchpin of the Iranian strategy and anything that weakens the Iranian regime, they support. I mean, I think the Israeli, the, the, uh, the Iranian people right now would celebrate Israel taking out the entire Iranian regime. That, that would be, that would be a, um, uh, massive, uh, uh, for them if that would happen.